In the final round of the Tata Steel Masters 2022, Pragnananda was up against Andre Esipenko. Now, Esipenko is one of the best juniors in the world. In fact, he's number two in the world rankings after Alireza Firuja. And uh, he was having a great tournament. In fact, Esipenko was gaining close to 10 ELO points before this game. Pragnananda uh, had shown that he is quite capable of holding his own holding his own in this field. He had uh, beaten Nils Grandelius and also Vidit Gujarati. And he got a walkover against uh, Dubo. So this final round was quite important for Prag and he opened the game with 1d4. Knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, a3. Uh, in getting inspired by Jordan Van Forest uh, after he beat Anishgiri it seems. Bishop takes c3, b c3, c5. Now this is the line that Esipenko chooses is the one that I recommend in my opening repertoire for black series. I will attach it uh, in the i above. Uh, and also I will uh, put it in the um, end screen at the end of this video so that you can learn this. Esipenko goes e, uh, Prag goes e3, knight c6, bishop d3 and here black castles, knight e2 so that you can later on play e4 and f4, your knight is not blocking the f-pawn, b6, black has a clear plan, put the bishop here get the knight to a5 and hit this weakness on c4, e4. And this is the moment where I would like you to pause your video and figure out what black should do. The move is very pretty, knight e8. The idea is that you want to prevent bishop g5 and also when white goes f4 at a later point, you want to block it with f5. So castles, bishop a6 and now f4. You need to figure out what would you do here with black. Try to find black's move. Yes, as I mentioned, f5 is the correct move, blocking the pawn. If you were to get greedy and go knight a5, then after uh, f5, say bishop c4, f6 already it's very dangerous, takes bishop g5. White has a big, big advantage here. So f5 was correct here that was played and now e takes f5 there is also another way to play this that is e5 i believe and then after knight a5 uh, there is an interesting move that white can play which is d5 and this was played in milo versus polgar uh, and a very important move that was played against me by vaibhav suri here was d6 very nice move and i had lost that game with white after d6 very nice move um if you were greedy and you took on c4 in this position then after bishop c4 knight c4 and d6 here white has great chances uh, to play for an advantage because the knight here is sort of trapped so but e takes f5 is becoming more popular e takes f5, d takes c5, b takes c5. I remember that in this line, uh, there are some very good games uh, by top players. In fact, uh, Karpov had once played it as well with black against Yusupov. It was slightly different, but it was similar. Bishop e3 and now d6. And now you go knight g3. And here I was a bit surprised with Esipenko's move, which was knight e7, because clearly the main move, main line here, g6, works pretty okay for black. Um, and I think black is doing well in such positions. There was the game Carlson Nakamura in 2020, which continued with rook e1, knight f6, and actually Nakamura went on to win a very, very nice game against Magnus. Uh, but bishop takes f5 was... Uh, is, is a tactical opportunity, but I think it doesn't work because after gf, queen d5, rook f7, you take on c6, and now I go bishop b7, the queen has to move away, and now you go h5, and the point is my queen will move in here, I'm threatening h4, my rook can move here attacking this, and this is great compensation for black, he's better actually. So, 
knight e7 was a slightly surprising move for me uh queen f3 by prague this is the first new move of the game and here i think Esipenko went wrong uh the the best move here is g6 and let's say you go rook b1 now uh, rook b8 is one possibility which is nice like take take rook b1 and queen c7 black is doing okay the other way is to play knight f6 and i think this is the main point you put your knight on a square on f6 not on c7 like in the game because after rook e1 queen d7 bishop f2 rook b8 black has great coordination this is what i think uh Asipenko should have chosen because the moment he went knight c7 here the coordination is broken i'll tell you exactly how rook b1 queen d7 rook f e1 in this position and now the question is that in such position a black should at least if he goes rook uh, d8 uh, sorry rook b8 then the problem is that uh, the f5 pawn could become weak so let's say we we first start with g6 like in the game bishop f2 and now rook b8 then knight f1 rook b1 rook b1 now you can't play rook b8 easily knight c8 knight e3 knight b6 and bishop h4 when we get something similar to the game this was maybe a better way to play actually than the game like rook b8 but he went knight c8 and i think here prag found a very nice maneuver and i would like you to pause the video and try to figure out what white should do So black clearly wants to come to b6 to put pressure here and d5 is a nice juicy weakness actually. So knight f1 is a great move with the idea of knight e3 coming to d5 also protecting c4. Knight b6, knight to e3, rook a e8 and now white played the move bishop h4. Black played queen g7 and uh, Prague defended his pawn with rook bc1, which is quite fine for now. Here, rook e6 was played, and now I would like to pause your like you to pause your video and try to figure out what is it that Pragnananda should do here. Okay, so one plan which could be very nice is h3. If you found this well done idea is to go uh, king h2 and perhaps g4 at the right time it's a very good plan the other plan if you said knight d5 this is not a good idea because after take take knight takes pawn takes bishop takes queen takes uh, queen b7 c4 queen g7 black is doing really well you know c4 is slightly weak queen d4 check is coming in so the move that Pragnananda played was very nice here uh, after rook e6. He played the move a4. I loved this move. And actually Pragnananda understood that if he can get rid of this knight, his knight can jump to d5. And it's a distracting sacrifice. Actually, Sipenko went on to just chop that pawn off. Rook f8 was definitely an option uh, here. And then playing it this way. But... Esipenko thought, well, why not? You know, it's a free pawn. Why not take it? Prag said, nothing is free in this world. He goes knight d5. And now bishop b7 was played. So if knight, d, uh, if knight d5, then queen d5, white wins. If rook e1, rook e1, knight d5, then queen d5. And this is also winning for white. Uh, let's say if you go king h8, then I have queen d6. Knight c3, bishop e7. Check. That is winning. And the other one is queen f7, then you go queen c6 with the idea of rook e7 trapping the queen, uh, attacking the bishop. So this is also winning. Rook e1, rook e1, bishop b7 is the best move here. But he decided to play bishop b7 directly. Prag took, knight takes and played rook e1. And here I was expecting him to go uh, knight c7, black to play knight c7. And then, of course, rook e7 is a blunder because now after rook f7, uh, white is lost. He's pawned down and has no compensation. 
but the way to continue here could be uh, knight e7 check queen e7 bishop e7 bishop f3 bishop f8 king f8 g takes f3 and what is this position i'm not sure maybe it's slightly better for white after rook a1 threatening rook a3 to trap the knight d5 takes knight e6 and i think black has chances to hold this to a draw but knight c7 was best there was also a move g5 which could have been played and here although white's position looks really good after queen g3 it is still playable uh, and black can fight on but queen d7 was a very bad move and here uh, prague could have gone queen f2 but he played queen g3 which is also nice the main difference between queen f2 and queen g3 is that after take take here knight c7 rook e7 queen c8 and now i can go queen a2 hitting the knight and then also hitting this pawn while in queen g3 in that same variation after take take uh, let's say knight c7 here here i'm not able to get my queen to a2 that's the that's the difference but c4 white is still better so i everyone's expecting that uh, sipenko will take this but he just blanked out he played rook f7 and Pragnananda now went in knight f6, great move, rook f6, bishop f6, and he's exchange up. Queen h4, bishop g5, threatening bishop takes f5, and h5 is hanging. So mate in one threatened here on g2. Prag went back, knight takes g5, f takes g5, bishop c8. Well, if you were to take on c3, then bishop f5 is very powerful. Uh, gf5 queen f5 it's already over the king will get mated bishop c8 and now here i would like you to pause the video and find the moves that prag missed and which made the game really long but there was a very nice way for white to be the move i'm looking for is g4 and if you found it amazing because if at g4 then queen at seven and it's over the queen comes in if fg4 now i go queen e3 queen d7 check and bishop g6 and it's winning in the game he went queen e3 and after queen d7 there's no way to make progress so queen e2 queen d8 queen a2 bishop d7 somehow Esipenko managed to you know uh, get his pieces together and hold it here but i mean there was no doubt that pragnananda was going to win this sooner or later uh, another way to win here was bishop a4, bishop c4, bishop c6. The main point is that you get ready for rook b1 to b8, this position. So, and now rook b8 coming up next and white wins. This could have been the fastest way giving up this pawn, but uh, Prag was careful. He played rook a1. Now you can't take, by the way, on c4 because of rook a8 trapping the queen. So played queen c8. Prag took. Maybe he could have kept the queen on the board, but he took, took, bishop b3, uh, king e7, rook a6, king d8, he brought the king in. Now it's not so trivial to win, uh, but Prag took his time, he moved around, g3, and now came this moment, bishop a4, which was nicely timed, because when the king is here, Bishop a4 makes sense. If you play this now, c4, I take, I play this. g6 is hanging. If you play knight e7, check. I sack an exchange and I win in the bishop endgame. Um, he played knight b6, Prague went bishop b5, knight c8 back, king e3. And here I would have been interested to see how Prague would have broken through after king d8. I think he might have run his king over like this. It is one plan or I'm not sure what are the other options here. But Esipenko blundered with bishop e6 and now Prague played bishop e8 attacking this. And as we already know, knight e7 is met with rook a7, sac sacrificing an exchange and taking on g6. And so Pragnananda scored a nice win. I thought this entire game was excellently played by the youngster. And uh, he, in his first super tournament appearance, 
has done really well uh, if we just look at pragnananda's result here uh, he has done very nicely he's finished five and a half out of 13 with wins against vidit uh Penko and grandelius nils so he he can be proud of his achievement and of course the boy has shown that he can play against the best players in the world and we hope that he gets more opportunities he ended with seven elo points 2619 which in itself is fantastic congratulations prague this is sagar shah signing off bye bye